Hello, welcome back to Football United TV. I'm back again with Sam and Danny. How are you guys doing? Good, mate. Good. You're struggling, aren't you, Danny? Uh, to put it lightly, mate, yes. Yes, we are. Why? What, what's that? I mean, obviously, you um, lost to Chelsea yesterday. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that, mate? Um, well, I I went into the game. We, you don't teams like us. You don't expect to beat Chelsea, but it's just a manner of we lost. Like we didn't start playing until the last fifty minutes, and by the time then it's all over. We just, I just want to just have a go at them. Like we just like West Ham did. West Ham actually had a go at them and they got the win, but we just sat deep and it's just invite it invited them on. And you know it was only going to be one winner. It seems to be playing defensive, but the, the, uh, we've got Norwich on Tuesday. It's a massive game, massive. Because if we don't win that, then you know it's curtains. To be honest. Yeah, it's my yeah. I mean, Norwich are probably gone already. They're starting to plan for next season, but you know they're still they're still mathematically not not down yet. So I've still got things. Yeah, it's, like... yeah, still got things, but it's um, it's we just need to win. Yeah, not even draw. We literally need to win. Anything other than um, it's curtains for us. For what's that? What do you yeah? What do you make of that, Sam? As a, on a Watford perspective, <clears throat> I mean, they're a strange team, Watford. They um. I think they're very inconsistent. They're, they're sort of there or thereabouts, but they're never quite there enough. They they make some some decent signings, you know, in the market. I think they're not not too bad, but I think Watford's problem is their defence. It's it's leaky. They they leak stupid goals, stupid errors. Defence defence has been our problem for the last five years. Yeah, I we've saw not you earlier that you yeah. It's a joke. Angela was probably the last. Better yeah, he was he was the last. Like since we had the owners, our owners been with us since 2012. He was the he's been the only like outstanding defender we had, and we and he was a massive part of why we got promoted in 2014. And then since we got promoted, they were quick to bid him off. And and then since then, the defenders we've had have just been shambles. Really. We're not shambles, but just been nowhere near good enough because we're not going to get anywhere with uh, shambolic defence. You know, you look at Liverpool for example. Before Van Dyke, you know, they were never going to win league with that defence and the goalkeeper. As soon as they're on a decent goalkeeper, get Van Dyke in. All of a sudden, look how good they are. So it just it shows you need a good, you need a good defence and you know a good goal. We've got a good goalkeeper, Ben Foster, but our defence is just it's a joke. It really he's is. getting on a bit though. He's still got on a bit. He still does a job. But, you know, he's 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 only got another what, two three years left, maybe maximum. When you first signed Cabaselli, I thought that was was, was a decent signing. It was he, at the time, he, but he didn't look too bad, but he just he has a mistake in him. That's the problem. Yeah, he's, he's got a mistake. You know, I never feel comfortable with him in the side. Like on the other, the other game, he'll have the blinder, but most of the time, I can I watch him playing. Like he's going to make a mistake any minute now. He's going to make a mistake in pretty much every game this season. He's made a mistake. Like he's got he's got sent off. I think three times this season, so or maybe twice. I don't know, but you know he's conceded nine goal and stuff. So he's just he's. Most of the time, it's shambles, but there you go. Do you think it would have been different, though, like if they wouldn't have had Nigel Pearson as the manager coming in? Because I think it's been amazing since. I mean, you've obviously beat Liverpool. Mm. The only team to beat Liverpool, apart from well, Man City the other day, but we don't really yeah. know about that. What do you make of his involvement in it? I mean, it could have been a lot different, don't you think? <clears throat> yeah, well, he... he by, the, it started from the summer, in my opinion, because the hangover from the FA Cup final last season, you know... Any any team to get lose the way we did in the FA Cup final, and it a lot. Of, I mean, high sight's a wonderful thing, but a lot of what the fans when when the bad run we had at the start of the season was saying, oh, we should have got rid of having grass here in the summer. But again, hindsight is a wonderful thing. But the way the way the way the players just look so dejected, and then they come into us come into the first game. See, we got absolutely battered by Brighton three 0 in the first game of the season, and then and then the second game, I think uh, we only lost one nil, but we didn't play well, and in the the second home game, we got smashed by West Ham. So it was a case of, right, we needed to get rid of them. But it, it took him until probably September to make the change. And then, um, obviously, Flores came in, which he, that was a mistake in his all because we had him before when we first came in the Premier League. You know, hmm. it, was, it, was good, it was good for six months, the first six months originally. But after that, it was shocking. And I, I still, don't, still don't know why we got him back in. I really don't know. Because it didn't work in the first place, so why are you giving a manager back when it didn't work out? And then we get Pearson in just just for Christmas. You know, it started off. You know, we, his first game was Liverpool away, but we played really well. Like we even Liverpool fans, we were outstanding that game. And um, the, his first, he won his first three home games. I thought, ah, oh, 
here we go. Like, so it, you know, we're going to be safe. We're going to be easy safe. But, you know, we weren't, obviously we beat Liverpool, but since then it's just been, he, watching him, he doesn't know his best side yet. He keeps changing to play, especially defence. He hasn't had a settled team yet. We, it's, um, I, I, like, I like the guy, but he's not an answer for long term. He's just kind of there just to keep us safe. But again, it's a question, if, is he actually going to keep us up now? Because he's quite a, frankly sends down, that'll be travesty. So. I mean, you look fairly solid with Javi Grazia. And then, you know, you started getting a few decent results, and then for some reason, you just absolutely plummeted. And yeah, but not really sure part, part, part of that was because obviously the run we had in the FA Cup last year, you know, because before, mm. before the um, before the semi final, we, we were like, we were, us and Wolves were like fighting for that last European spot. And then obviously, we beat, we beat Wolves in the semi final, which, you know, it's a game I'll never forget. Obviously, we beat them in the semi final. And then after semi final, our focus, understandably, was on the FA Cup final. And after after that, you know, in between the semi final and the final and the league games, we were like playing a lot of fringe players, and we weren't getting the results. I mean, our only results from the last ten games, I think, our only two wins were against Fulham and Huddersfield. So that says all, really. So, yeah, it's um, yeah, I love Harry, but you know, he, he didn't have a, he didn't have any sort of, he only had one way of playing. To be a top team, you need to have two, three, four, five different ways of playing. Unfortunately, he said he couldn't adapt to what was going on around him. No, he couldn't adapt. We, we we knew every game, provided all players were fit, we knew what the start level was going to be. We just we just knew there wasn't going to be any changes by our injuries and suspensions. Like he he had, he had his eleven, and he wasn't he wasn't man enough to, to change it in each team. That's unfortunately probably what he's down for in the end. To be honest. Do you think um, Watford's philosophy now with the managers, you know, the fact that they've changed so many managers in so mm. many seasons, do you think that might change now? Do you think they'll keep with Nigel Pearson? Either um, way, go down or stay up? <clears throat> it, it, to be honest, you, you look at it on both sides. It, it's worked up until now. It's worked having all these different managers. But I think, ask, ask any, not just Watford fan, ask any football fan. Football fans want, like, want, you know, people, to, they don't want managers and players to keep, Going all the time because it doesn't help the you know the the continuity of the team. They just want want a bit of stability. But um, I, like I just said before, Pierce is to me is not the answer for long term. You know, if, if I was a better man, I'd say um, Pierce would be replaced in the summer. But it, it's a case of who they're getting in. They need to get someone in now to to, to be with us for long term because it just it doesn't work. Now. It, it's worked until this point, and unfortunately now it's not working. Teams are sussing us out. But players are not wanting to join us because they know oh, they're probably going to be different managers in six months. So they, we just we need to get someone. I, I couldn't tell you who to get, but we just need someone now that, that fits under the way we run and that's for long term. So. You know, I think Potch is available. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll take him out, <laughs> mate. But again, he's you he don't win trophies. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, he's, he's a he's a class manager, you know, but. He, It'd be a mug to come to Watford, to be honest. It's the way our clubs run at the moment. So, Sam, we'll um, quickly talk about your thoughts on um, <clears throat> Tottenham's last result. How are you feeling, mate? It was pretty brutal, right? <clears throat> I mean, I don't really know what to say, to be honest. It, the, the game itself wasn't, I suppose, terrible. We sort of expected how they would play, and they played how we expected them to. But what annoys me, obviously, is that disallowed goal. Why? It's a joke. It was a joke. That, that's that's the mm. worst decision I've ever seen in my yeah. life. You, I was watching that. You, you look, you that in, that in real time. Obviously, yeah, he's hit his hand, but in real time, like you're playing on the match, that no mm. no players were appealing for it in real time. Mm. Like, yeah, it was it was handball technically, but he, it wasn't deliberate. So. Yeah, I understand. I understand the rule that if it leads to a goal, yeah. whether it's intentional or not, if it is your hand, it's handball. But yeah, there's also a, a rule that states if a player's fallen over, mm. obviously, obviously he's going to put his hands down as long as he doesn't extend his extend his body. And if that leads to a goal, that's allowed. Yet yeah, that's the case of what happened. Mm. So once again, VAR's failed, yeah. um, and that that goal completely changes the game because we scored straight from kickoff. You know, we our age don't drop. We don't become. You feel, we don't feel defeated. We crack on for that winning goal, and it's just how hard can it be to get things wrong all the time? Every fifty-fifty seems to be the wrong decision. Mm. Well, can, can you remember when we played you away early on in the season when we got when we got when we got robbed of a VAR decision? We got two VAR decisions go against us when we played you. Do you remember? If it goes our way, it's not robbed. <laughs> no, it wasn't Rob. It's just the fact that on the screen it came up goal disallowed. Yet the referee 
said it as a goal. It was a complete mix-up for it. Yeah, no one, no one knew what was going on. No, nah, I mean, I was, obviously, I was there in the way, and it was just like, we started celebrating, thinking, oh, it's yeah. been disallowed, but yet yeah, yeah. all the players at the centre circle, it's like, well, what the hell has gone on? So that, that's the thing, VR. Right? And then, uh, what was it? The first first couple of games back, the the, uh, the Villa Sheffield United game, there was uh, the referee's watch weren't working or something. Yeah, we talked about yeah. it on our last show, and um, mm. I think the thing is with VAR, is they're dictating what they think the decision should be when the fact mm. is I feel it should be the ref and I think that's yeah, 100%. The touchline. Mm. at least if he gets the decision I'll, I'm cool with that even if I think it's still a handball or not mm. he's made the decision do you know what I mean instead of people in a 100%. in a booth at the end of the day the referee is the one controlling the game he needs to make mm. that final decision he understands the rhythm of the game and, and, and the mm. way the game is going someone in, in Stockley Park 100 miles away then he, he's not there mm. Exactly. It's, it's, it's strange. I don't. Why are we the only country that doesn't go to the screen? Mm. And yet, if our in every other country works purely because of the yeah. refs make the decision, and yet we yeah, don't exactly. have that. I don't know why. No, no, it baffles me. Unique. I think Tottenham in general at the moment are just shocking. Europe's gone, Champions League's gone. I don't mm. particularly want the Europa League because for me it's a bit it's of a, bit of a distraction, isn't it? It's a bit of a distraction. I understand yeah. it's a chance for a trophy and, it, and it, if you win it obviously you, you go to the Champions League next year but it's, it's, it's not something that's taken seriously really it's, and no. I don't want the extra oh. game that are no. not necessary when, when you, you don't need it I'd rather not have them so what, what would your ambitions be then for this season not for Tottenham not what position in the league or? <laughs> obviously our, our minimum is top four and and mm. That's just how it's going to be now. Unless we become a, a magical team overnight and start going for the title, top four is where we should be and what we should be achieving. Mm. I think Jose can do something, whether or not he, he is the long-term thing. He, I mean, he has a bit of a three-season syndrome with clubs, doesn't he? Mm. He, he, does, he does well with that first two seasons. And that third season, he, he, he gets sacked, basically. But I'll, I'd be happy with two seasons out with him. As long as next season we have... A goal of what we want, of how we're going to do it. You know, we we need to start investing in the playing staff. You know, we've got this world class class stadium. Everything we needed investing is invested. A, a quality training ground. It's just that playing staff that we need. But Tangi and Dombelli is our record signing. When Quite he plays, <laughs> when he plays, he's clearly the best player on the pitch. But yet mm. for some reason, Jose doesn't like him. Mm. Whether he, whether he thinks he's overweight or not, I don't know. But he, he needs game time to to get that stamina. I'll never, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, Jose should be doing this and doing that because then they, he knows best. You know, he's one of the greatest mm. ever managers. He knows what he's doing. But it's so frustrating to see that we sit here and say, just do that. Even if he does and it doesn't work out, that's fine because he's done what the fans have been asking for and what we want. But just change some it. He doesn't seem to be able to adapt to a game. He, He's, his style, as we know, is, is so defensive. And that's just the way he plays. It's worked for him. But it's like that Man United game. When we went on the lap, we had 11 men behind the ball. They are going to score. You're inviting the pressure. You need to have that attack in football. You, you can't sit on a one-deal lead because you, you'll never keep it. Are you basically Obviously, parking the bus? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he's, yeah, he, yeah, he parks the bus. That's just the style of football. See, yeah. I, I, I've, when, I, when I watch Tottenham on telly, I'll, when, when Harry Kane doesn't play, I've always thought Tottenham are a much better team when he doesn't play. Mm. I mean, ha Harry Kane, obviously, he's got a phenomenal goal score record. You know, he's been a, such a great player. But when he plays, he seems to play with a lot more pace. Because obviously, mm. you have like Son, Mura, uh, I don't know whoever else you have, Son, Mura. You know, even Ali's got a bit of pace about him. So, but... Do you, do, you, do you find when Harry Kane plays it, they have to kind of force the ball to him? With Harry Kane in the team, we know he's our best player. Mm. So in our red, it's give the ball to Harry. Because he'll, he'll do it, things. It, it, it's exactly the same with, with Dini. You, you, you get the ball. If you look at um, Tottenham getting to the Champions League final, I don't think Harry Kane was in the team, if you remember. <clears throat> no, he wasn't. I think he was injured, wasn't he? For the semi-final, wasn't yeah. he? He was, yeah. yeah. Well, Poch got a lot of stick for that for playing him in the final, but... I'm not mm. being funny, but he's your best player. You've got to play with Champions League title. He has to mm. play. You know, he might yeah. not be fit, and Lucas might have deserved it, but it's the Champions League final. You've got to play him. You have to. I just think when we play with Kane, we get the ball, and instantly our head looks for him. 
We don't mm. look for a bad and just try and find Harry Kane. Exactly and the same verse with Deeney. Exactly the same. The thing is, with Kane, he's becoming a lot more... You can tell me when he gets frustrated because he starts dropping deeper mm. and deeper to get the ball. Mm. But mm. He'll, he'll win the ball back in, in our own third. But then you think, well, you've got no one to play it to. You know, you, you, you need to be the one chasing these balls down, not getting the balls and, and pinging them under. We need you on the end of them. And it's, you know, he does have this quality ability to just ping a ball. You know, he's, he's, he's a lot more than one dimension. He can't just yeah, score yeah. up. You know, he, he, there, he has a lot about him. But it's frustrating to see that you want your best goal scorer in goal scoring positions. And fair enough, he's not always getting the service he needs. But I don't know. We, we do rely on him. We, we rely on him too much. I think, like I said, when, we, when he's not in the team, we can just play our game because there's no standout mm. play. You're all just together as a team. But with Kane, yeah. obviously, he's the main focal point and you will look for him. And that ruins the flow of other players because then they get taken out of the game. It's just, it's just one of them things. It's, <clears> you know, he's, I'd rather have him in the team than without the team, obviously. There are just times where you think, just play together. Don't stop looking for him. Mm. If, if, if he scores, he'll score. You know, if he gets a chance, he'll score. But don't force it. Just let it play. Danny, you were saying there was a resemblance there with the fact with you and Troy Deeney. You know, mm. the same thing with with Watford. The fact that they always try and look for him to sort of get him out of these tight positions that they get into. Yeah, he's um, obviously he's been with us now. For, this is his tenth tenth season at Watford now, so he's been with us, you know, such a long time. He's the captain, he's the leader. Testimonial, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a testimonial year. So, so um, yeah, it's a case of. We're not blessed with quality strike. You know, we've got Danny Welbeck. He's been, you know, at, at the time when he was at Man United and, you know, at early part of his career, you know, he was England, England international. I forget. You know, on his day, he's a really good striker. But he's just we just can't get him fit. And mm. we were like, and Andrew, we've got Andre Gray. He just doesn't. We paid eighty million pounds for him. He just doesn't cut it. He's just not and not a Premier League striker. So now, uh, literally, we only have Troy Deeney. So it's a case of. And the board, the players know, like he's the captain. He's you know he's the he's the he's the speaker and dresser. I mean, they just they just try to play. You know, it's, it'd be a different story if the, the balls like because he, he can't. He's not the player to run on to run on to balls. He can only get the ball and look for other players. But he'll get the ball. We'll play the ball to him, and there's nobody running off him. So, and De- Deeney's game is you know hold up play. You know, target man if you like. And we're not doing that, man, because we haven't got we haven't got players running off him. We haven't got Deeney. Deeney works well ha- having a partner next to him. You know, we saw that when when we had a Gallo. You know, they in between them when we got promoted, they scored twenty. I think in between them they scored about forty goals. And when we had when we had Vidra a few years before that, they both scored forty goals again. So Deeney never works well as a as a lone striker. You know, it just doesn't work, and it's a case of. Do you, do you remember when a couple of years ago when John Terry was leaving Chelsea? It's similar to them. He was holding them back a little bit. It's a case of right, the look you've had the loyalty, just you know, you've done however many years. Just, you know, let the club progress. Because we are not going to progress with Troy Dini's squad and that pains me to say, because I absolutely love the guy to bit. But we're just not we're just not going to get anywhere with him inside. You know, it's good to have him around, but he shouldn't he shouldn't be a starter every single week now. He just shouldn't. I can see in the background, is that you in a picture of him there? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's um, at the end of season awards a few years ago. I've met I've met him about a hundred times. You know, I've met him so many times. He, he knows us by name, and he knows me by name. And it's, it's uh, you know, if I pick a Watford eleven, all time Watford eleven, he, he's straight in there. But um, it 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 means nothing. You know, if I want I want my club to progress. I want my club to to win things. And if I'm being honest, we're not going to win doing any of that with him in the side, unfortunately. This, this, it's a bit of a problem with Troy Deeney is your main striker if he's your number one striker yeah. he's not going to score goals that's not his no he's not no he's just not it's, um, I, I, I'll tell you our two best strikers are currently out on loan in Spain you know, one of them is playing for Mallorca and one of them is playing in the second Spanish division yeah we've got Hernandez at Mallorca and then we've got a player called Suar- uh, Luis Suarez from United. Oh, yeah. we've got a player called Luis Suarez and Val- um, Zaragoza I think or something like that that, that, and you know, I think we've got Hernandez. is meant to be coming in, coming in. So because we've had him for about three years, it's been the work permit. That's been yeah, the problem. Work permit, yeah, yeah, it's work permit. Because he's um, Colombian, he's only young. Could get work permit. So the idea is to send him out alone to Europe, get him. And now, now he's he's actually ready. Like they did an interview with him, and he 
you only said to him, right, you're part of the squad next season, but that all yeah. depends on what league we're in. Yeah, curtains for Dini, unfortunately, but, you know, I love him to bits and it, it really does hurt me to say it. But, again, I want the best for my club, so. I think um, possibly Watford could do what they have done in the past, um, looking at, I think, is it Granada in Spain that they mm. sort of joined? No, they, they don't own them now. They, they did for a number of, obviously, you know, they're the main club, but then they owned Granada, for, but they, they sold them a couple of years ago. Um, we, we we just tend, but cause we, we used to like like probably about to touch on. They used to just buy players from you, well not even buy, get players from you and just ship them onto worse. But they don't do that so much now. They did it for a large part when we got promoted. That was the main part of the reason why we got promoted. We had a lot of players from you and Nase and stuff. But they don't do much now. But they they still have, obviously have massive connections with them. Of course they do. But that that their scouting network is huge, like massive. Like, mm-hmm. I'll give you a number of players that they've had on their books. They've had Alexis Sanchez, they've had Handanovic, they've had Quadrado, they've had, they've had Bruno Fernandes as well. All, all, all them players were you know at one point, like huge names in world of football. So their scout network is massive, but it's just, it, for Watford, it, they've not, they're not scouting the right players to fit Watford, unfortunately. They'd probably do well in the European leagues, but in the Prem, it's a totally different ball game, as we all know. Would you say you're an attractive club, though? Like, Obviously, it's all going well finding them players, but then the players themselves mm. need to join. Yeah, it's it's tricky one because we we generally speaking we're a small club. We all know we're a small club. It depends. It, it, if it, it, again, it's, it's a whole lot of different things. They're, they're not going to want to come to a club that like let's let's say for instance we, we stay at Boston about TC season, and we 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 want to buy you know Joe Bloggs or whatever, and he mm. sees right Watford struggling. They, 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 they were. They survived by one point. That's not a, somebody. I, I personally wouldn't want to complain to them. The team has been struggling. But if, if for instance, you know, if, if if we weren't struggling this season, we were. We had a season like we did last season. Yeah, we, we're attractive, but they they need to set out a plan of what we want to do. Because I just I don't want to come to a club that's just set up, set on mid table every season. I want to I want to see a plan if I sign that contract. It's like when I, you I sign see, right. Roberto Pereira. That yeah, was, oh, mate, that was the that, that guy. We got for peanuts. We actually got because the year before he was in the Champions League, playing in the Champions League final. Yeah, yeah. And time, we got for absolute peanuts, and that guy is class. But again, but he's, he's a he's, player. He, he's a player that doesn't do it. He doesn't do it every game. Not on your game, he's you know he's unplayable. But it's we, we need we need players. I get every every player has an off day. Of course they do. But he has too many off days, unfortunately. It's, it's consistently off. Yeah, he's you know he has one good game every probably 10, 12 games and it's just not enough but, but will he have this sort of moment of magic in a match where he can just turn he it will, on? Yeah. He, he, he'll, he'll, he will literally, he'll come up, he'll probably, he'll probably, yeah, he'll be brilliant for one game and then, and then the next 10 games you won't, you won't see him on the pitch, you'll get subbed at half-time. Mm. It's, it's, it's unfortunate but we've got too many players like that. We've got too many players like that at Watford and that's why we're struggling because we have, you quite have an Asian squad as well. Like, yeah, obviously not, we I know have, you've got Saar and Kiko for me, yeah. he's fairly young. But you look at the players we have got, obviously Ben Foster, he's mm. he's hold of ass, he's old. Yeah. Dean needs he's getting on, you know. Yeah. The players themselves are aging, you need essentially just yeah. need a complete rebuild. Deep down I think we will stay up, but you know, I you know, I would say that, but I think we will stay up and if that's the case, we literally need a whole rebuild of the squad. Um, you know, start starting with um, you know, probably Dini, to be honest, I, I, won't, I won't get rid of him, but he just he can't be he can't be the, the main striker. He just can't be. Danny, what you happened know, we've with got... of um, Papa Gray? Oh, basically, um, I think we signed we signed a pre contract with him in like April or something. You know, it was the club announced it. Like the club announced it on the Twitter. Welcome to Watford, Papa Gray. We were joining on the first of July, and then all of a sudden, it, it's something to do with him. he changed agents. He changed agents. Yeah. Like that. He changed agents. Like his, his old agent. Um, agree, agree to the what for transfer or something, and then he because that was a thing, wasn't there? Yeah, it was yeah, up. there was a picture. So, and uh, us, we were all excited because we, we, I don't know much about him to be honest, but we were watching all the videos and we thought, oh, he's, he's going to be quite good. And then all of a sudden, it come out. Oh, he come out and said, I've not agreed to the what transfer yet. We saw a picture of you signing the contract. So we we're like, what the hell has gone on there? So it, we're gonna something. Something's gonna come out in the next few weeks. I'd imagine something, some somewhere or someone's. He's not gone mad. Really, eh? really dodgy. Yeah, some something really dodgy gone on yeah. there. So we're just gonna wait. Because so, technically, 
he was a Watford player for 12 hours or mm. whatever it was. So, mm. so technically, we are, some, something's going to come out in the next few weeks. I can guarantee you that, but we'll just wait and see. Danny, what's your, um, what's your uh, prediction of the score against Norwich? What, what do you reckon it's going to be? Uh, do you want my hat or my head? <laughs> bit of both. A bit of both. I like a bit of both. Um, my hat's obviously Watford to win, you know, uh, quite easily. We could beat him three, four nil. Have no worries. But in my head, I'm thinking this is Watford. You know, we're, we're struggling. Probably, probably, I'll go for about two one, maybe two one, one nil. Genuinely, I just don't care. I don't get how we win. Just get the win. I don't care. It's an own goal, whatever. Just, we need, we need that three points desperately. But yeah, I'll probably go. I'll probably go two one. Risky two one. What about you, Sam? On that, on that game. Um, yeah, I mean, you would, you would probably go Watford. I mean, Norwich have. You know they've struggled. They are pretty much gone. They, um, you know, they've still got, they've still got things to fight for. They can still escape. It's just highly unlikely. I think they're at a point now where, <clears throat> like Danny said earlier, they're going to start thinking about championship next year. They they're going to prepare for that. Obviously, they've still got a duty to to play as well as they can, and they're going to want to pick up as many points as, as possible. But I think when it comes down to it. I think Watford will deal with the pressure more <clears throat> because they know they can escape. Norwich pretty much gone, and they're, they're, they'll be defeated by it. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think Watford. I think it'll be you know a boring one nil, route one goal. But um, a goal is a goal. Three points are three points. It'll snap be your hand off for that. Snap your hand off for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm actually going to say uh, I'm going to say about two nil, maybe a three nil for Watford. I think they'll be the ones that will run them over. Mm. Mm. Just just because of the fact that Watford, you know, the last couple of games haven't done well. They've been in good <laughs> in the last three or four months, especially before coronavirus, you know what I mean? So, yeah, looking at Norwich as well, yeah, a bit, bit shaky on them. Um, what about um, Tottenham versus Everton? What's your match prediction? Well, Sam? I mean, you, you don't know, really. I mean, there's, there's a point between us. We're 10th, they're 11th. You know, I mean, we're both not fighting for European football, so it's a bit of a bit of a stalemate, a bit of a, bit of a, a, a no game, really. Um, I think we'll win. You know, you look at the two scores, look at the two sides, we're easily the better side. We've just struggled recently. Well, I was having struggled, we've been terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, but we can turn it on. You know, if we, if we play our game, there's not many in the league that can beat us, I personally think. You know, we... We are a quality side. We've just struggled. And I don't know whether that's down to the manager or the players themselves. But we can do it. I think we'll get the win. I'd say probably 2 0 something like that. Kane for both, obviously. Um, but yeah, a, a massive three points, but not really massive, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does. What about you, uh, Danny? What do you think about that <laughs> game? Versus- um- I reckon it'll be a draw. I reckon, you know, like Sam's touched on, both teams, their season's kind of over now. Can't really, not, they're a bit of outsiders for the European spots. Um, yeah, I'll probably go 2-2 two, two maybe, 2-2, two, two, something like that. I just, I just want to finish the last one, to be honest. Can't believe yeah, that. You've got, you've got them at the weekend, haven't you? Next weekend. Yeah, we have, yeah. Yeah. yeah, first one, yeah. Uh, we'll, the stadium as well. we'll definitely get a vlog in for that one. Definitely, Sam. And yeah. Maybe even get an Arsenal fan on, you can have a little row with each other. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, I could try and fight with them, sure. I'm in, I'm, I'm in their caves. Brilliant. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us again today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Everybody for viewing, thank you very much. Go subscribe and go check out Football Talk on Facebook. See these lads on there. And yeah. Game's on now. I don't want to know the result yet, lads. I want to go back into it and see what's going on. But everybody, thank you for joining in and have a pleasant rest of your weekend.